in late summer of 75. I've now been, I've now been working a lot. Um, this young producer from Canada named Lorne Michaels starts frequenting the clubs, the improv and catch rising store. And he's um, a young, very um, smart, funny, uh, first time I saw a sport jacket with jeans, um, kind of guy, uh, very witty, and he's and and looking for funny people for this show called NBC Saturday Night. So he signs me to be on the very first show. Um, which was October 11th of 1975. George Carlin was to be the host. And um, I couldn't have been more excited about it because it felt like this was a show for us. This wasn't, wasn't the, you know, the, uh, a variety show like we knew it before. The concept of this was the regular programming ends at 11.30 and the kids take over 30 Rock. It and you understood that going in. Right away. First show. Right away. Wow. And so he, he asked me to be in the first show, and the thought was when we meet um, when we w at his office was um, there's going to be a regular company, and um, I said, could I be part of that? And he said, no, I think that this would be better. I want the guest spots, and then maybe eventually as we go on, you know, we're going to have different hosts every week. It would be great to groom you to, at one point, two years from now, a year from whatever it may be, be a, a host rather than being there every, every day. Now, I didn't know at that point he had Belushi and, and um, the original cast, Danny Aykroyd and, and all that, and um, Gilda, Lorraine, Garrett, uh, and Chevy. So we, um, he brings, I'm playing The Bitter End, um, and he, it was called The Other End then, and he brings Marvin Antonowski, who was the head of the network, of, of NBC at the time. Dave Tebbett, who was the head of talent. I remember uh, was Chevy was there, um, Gilda was there, and they're showing them the new talent they wanted to see me. So I did, a, I thought a really good, now I'm doing an hour. I was the headliner now. So I do a really good show, and we all meet afterwards and so on and so forth. and. And it was pouring rain, and as we went outside to go out to going to get a drink or something, Chevy was only a writer on the show at the time. And he says, Lorne, you, I, I, and he runs down the street and takes a fall on purpose in a huge puddle and started screaming, I, I, and that's how he ended up being a performer on the show as well. It was that, it was that, it was that night. night. It was that night. So now... Um, we come to this uh, October 10th, and it's a run through the night before. It's a Friday night. <clears throat> um, and it's a full audience. And again, I did a, a non traditional piece, but that's what SNL was for, was that. So I had been on the road um, and, and in um, Nashville at a great club called the Exit Inn, which is where uh, Robert Altman shot the movie oh, wow. in Nashville, um, there were potato chips on, at, at, on the tables and pretzels on the tables. And when they were eating, it was so noisy. So I, I improvised this thing where I said, it was a jungle movie. Every time I take a step, everybody bite down on a potato chip. And it, got, it was really funny. So then it, as it developed, as I was touring, I'd get somebody on stage with me get a big bucket of potato chips, put a mic in it, and they would crunch them. So doing like live Foley while I did this funny uh, I remember movie the from 50s. the 50s. Okay. And that's what I was going to do on SNL. Wow. And so Friday night, and I had Don Pardo, rest his soul, who was the announcer of the show. It was Don's, just his hands, because you never saw Don's face on the show. And it really played great, but it was long. So at the end of the, uh, after the show ends, and the other sketches weren't, didn't score well, 
there were two musical guests, uh, Billy Preston and Janice Ian. George did three monologues, and there was Andy Kaufman, myself, and a comedian from Canada named Valerie Bromfield. We were the three comedy discoveries that were going to make our debut. And so, um, I did really well. Andy did Mighty Mouse, which killed as Foreign Man. And at the end of the night, Lauren uh, was doing notes, and the show felt like it was, you know, in trouble a little bit. It wasn't as funny, but I could see that he had a great, he already had this genius about him. He was cutting this, moving this, putting that, this, and, you know, putting stuff together. So he said, I need two minutes, he said to me. I said, take two minutes out? He goes, no, I need two minutes total. How long was the piece? About five and a half or six. So I went, whoa. So I take the train home that night. I can't sleep. I come back. I'm on at the five to one slot at um, 12.55. It looks like that's the first thing that's going to get cut. So I, all the guys come, managers come. They talk to Lauren. I said, he, he, he said, I, I just need two minutes. All, that's all I have room for. The show was running long. And so then they wanted to into a room, talking, talking, talking. Um, and then uh, around 8 o'clock that night, or something like that, uh, they come out and go, you're bumped. We, we're not, we can't do the show. And I went, but I, because I, I didn't have anything else. I had nothing else. I had, didn't have a two-minute bit. I didn't have a Mighty Mouse, and that was, you know, a brilliant minute and a half piece or whatever. It was perfect. I didn't have that. And so managers protected me. Lauren protected the show, which he should do. And so I got bumped from the very, very first SNL.